If you can make it, that would be great. I believe it would be a blessing to you. You know, uh, I uh, appreciate the ones that came out tonight. Let's, let's keep this service in prayer. All right? Uh, let me ask you a question tonight. Let me ask you a simple question. You know, we're, we're all congregated here, the ones that's here. And uh, how would you feel if all of a sudden the Lord was to appear and was be sitting on this altar right there? I'd say, praise Bless. God, I'm going home. Bless. Because that's what he come back for, to get me. How would you react? How would you say, Lord, I'm good. I'm glad to see you. Or would you say, Lord, are you going to take your people out? Have I got another chance? Am I going to make it? See, we're living in a world today, and I, I keep saying this, I keep, I want to pound this into your mind to the place that you never forget it. We're living just before the coming of the Lord. Amen. There's something that is fixing to take place and they'll say, everybody says, you know, I hear this message every word that I go. I hear them telling me the Lord's coming back. He's coming back. Amen. Whether we want to admit it, whether we want to, to see to it or not, it's fixing to happen. <coughs> and when it happens, and if you're not ready to go, and every, there's something in your heart and in your mind and your spirit that needs to be changed, you better get it done. You better get it done. What am I saying? What? Okay. I don't know. I'm sorry. 19, all right. We'll, we'll play, we'll sing it. I'll try. Just before 20. Yeah. Right after 18. Right after 18. Somewhere in that area. Y'all, uh, this is my testimony tonight. I've struggled and I've all my bitter tears. Riches have eluded me through all my many years. But some sweet day in heaven, a mansion waits for me. And I We'll open wide those doors throughout eternity. You're all invited to my mansion, yes, God. Down here, I never had much. But I've always tried to share But all, all my doors Will be open <coughs> Over yonder You're invited to my mansion Over there If a flickering lamp you have in place of chandeliers, boarded floors may grace the halls you've lived in all these years. But just be true to Jesus someday when life is over. Must you a mansion over on that old shore? You're all invited to my mansion. Down here, I 
ain't never had much, but I've always tried to share. But all my doors will be open over yonder. You're invited to my mansion. You know, I I was sitting here a while ago, and, and I remember. I know my mind's going crazy here tonight. It's running everywhere. Y'all stay with me, okay? I remember the night that the Lord called me into the ministry. How many tonight remember the day, the night that God called you into the family of the Lord? How many Christians do we have in here tonight? How many people do we have that is unbelievers? Nobody in here is an unbeliever tonight. Praise the Lord. Amen. Because there's a, not an unbeliever in hell tonight. That's right. Everybody in hell tonight is a believer. Yep. They believe in Jesus Christ. They believe that He came to the, the world, He died, and He rose again. That we could have a plan of salvation that we don't have to be lost. That's, right. Amen. That's the gospel. That's the gospel tonight. I'm going to preach you the gospel tonight. I, I, I can't get through a sermon without telling you about this. About Jesus Christ coming to this earth. About Him coming and dying on the cross. Shedding His blood. Now the people say, you know, I've heard this whole story too. It sounds like the same song and dance. I just don't really care about hearing this. I'd rather, not, I'd rather just hear something else. Okay, I'm going to tell you about something else. Y'all stay with me, okay? Come on. This, this is just a little hilarious, okay? I just want to pitch this in. We got a Yorkie Poo. Anybody here knows what a Yorkie Poo is? It's a little puppy, a little dog. We got Riley a Yorkie Poo. And all I seen was a little fur ball. Today she went and had him groomed. I don't know how they done it. I suppose that they shaved him, stuck his tail in a light socket, and blowed his head up. <laughs> <laughs> now that's how it looked to me. You say, why are you telling me something like this at a time like this? Is that reality? Do you think they stuck his tail in the light socket? No. No, they didn't. They put the, they put the clippers to him. <coughs> they went through the normal formality to make this dog look like what he looks like. Now, I've got something to tell you tonight. I'm going to give you some reality tonight. I told you a while ago that if the Lord was to come into this building tonight and He was to come here and He was to sit on this altar right here, I ask you what you would do and how you would feel. Now I want you to re-examine what I just got through saying. See, God is in this building tonight. Amen. He's here. You know how he's, I know He's here? I brought Him with me. I felt Him. I did too. I felt the Lord when I came into this building tonight. Yeah. Now that's His reality. That's reality. Y'all stay with me. <coughs> yeah. 
through the years, there's been things that has happened in this world. Great events that has taken place. Whenever that uh, the Hebrew children came out of Egypt, they come to the Red Sea. They came to the Red Sea, and when they got to the Red Sea, there was no place to go. Pharaoh was right behind them to destroy them. And a great thing happened. A great thing took place. God looked down and he rolled the waters back. And the Hebrews went marching across on dry land to the other side. I want you to think about this just for a moment. I'm going to preach here in a minute. I want you to think about this just for a moment. That was thousands of years ago that this has happened. In 1943, 44, the United States was in a war with the Japan. People was dying by the thousands. Somebody come up with the idea of creating the atomic bomb. And they did. A plane flew over Himajima and dropped that bomb in the middle of town. It annihilated everything within miles of that town. Very few many people survived it. Now that was a great event. That was something that we had never seen before. We had never heard of such a thing. People didn't even know that atomic bomb existed. They had no, no idea that it existed. You say, what are you talking about? I'm talking about things that has happened on this earth. Things that have taken place, great events that has taken place. Now listen, stay with me. On 9-11, two huge planes flew into the Twin Towers. They took two Twin Towers down to the ground. How many remember that today and how many seen the pictures of how it happened? Now, let me ask you something tonight. Do you believe that really happened? That's reality. That's reality. It really happened. Now there's something that is fixing to take place. You can say, I don't want to hear this, but you're going to hear it. You know why you're going to hear it? Because God called me to preach the Word. Amen. God called me to see that people are not lost, but they give their heart to the Lord, and they are saved before it is too late. Now, I'm fixing to tell you about the next big event. You say, oh, what are you, some kind of prophet? No, I'm not no prophet. But I'm going to tell you about a great event that is fixing to take place that absolutely takes over everything that I have told you here tonight. <coughs> Something is fixing to take place. And let me tell you this. It is very few days, months, or years away that this is fixing to happen. There's going to be a great event that is fixing to take, it's going to take prims what everything. And I'm going to read you something tonight. And listen to what I'm fixing to read you. If you've got your Bible, I want you to turn to the book of Thessalonians, the fourth chapter. The fourth chapter, and I'm going to start reading in the 13th verse. Now I want you to know that everybody that's in this building tonight, you just had, didn't happen to show up here tonight. Oh no, you didn't. You didn't just happen to show up here tonight. There's a reason why that you walked in the doors of this church tonight. 
There's a reason why that you are here. She said, I don't know why. Uh, So-and-so asked me to come. I thought it'd just go along. No, my friend, that's not the way it is. You're here so that God can give you one more chance. Amen. Brother Mike was talking about his, his experience when he had his wreck and how that they thought he was dead. Pulled away from the site from the site of the accident, didn't even turn the lights on. Didn't turn the endless lights on, just wrong, he's gone. <coughs> my my sister called me. She said, Oscar, she said, Have you heard the news? I said, What news? She said, Brother she said, they said, Brother Mike, she said, Mike got killed this afternoon. I said, God. Make sure that everything's all right. I feel something. Amen. Me too, brother. Now stay with me. I feel the presence of the Lord in this building. Amen. Amen. You say, I can't feel nothing. I feel the presence of the Lord. I told you a while ago, what would you do if he came in and sat on this roster or sat on that altar? I'm not saying you're going to physically see him sitting on this altar. But you're going to feel his presence. Amen. Amen. He's going to speak to you. In the 13th verse <coughs> of the 4th chapter of 1 Thessalonians, it says this, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren. You know, whenever somebody, somebody calls you ignorant, I don't know about everybody else. I remember when I was a kid, you called me ignorant, and me and you was going together. Yeah. Don't you call me ignorant. Don't call me stupid. Because I'm not ignorant, I'm not stupid. To be ignorant don't mean you're illiterate. It means you just don't know. Okay? You just don't know. Now listen to what it says. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, Concerning them which are asleep. Listen to what I'm saying. That you sorry not, even as others which have no hope. How many in this building tonight has gotten a loved one that has went on before you and in your mind tonight you wonder where they're at? Everybody in this building tonight, you say, I hope and I pray that they made the right decision before they left. Amen. I've got a close kin that I wonder about. I question the Lord about. I know that we're sitting in that we're we're in the hands of a just God when we leave here. But listen to what it says. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. If somebody that you know and you knew that they gave their heart to the Lord and they was ready to go, he's coming back and he's bringing them with him. Amen. Amen. I told you a while ago there was going to be a great event that was fixing to take place. There was another great event one time that sealed our, our salvation was whenever Jesus, on a morning, whenever the angel of the Lord descended to the earth, took a big stone that was rolled over a sepulcher and rolled that stone back. And when he rolled that stone back, this Jesus that I'm telling you about that paid the price that you could have a plan of salvation, Tonight, he walked out of that tomb Amen. and sealed our salvation for good. Amen, that's right. That was a great event. But the great event that I'm fixing to tell you about tonight that is fixing to take place, and it's going to take place here not very far down the road. I'm telling you tonight, <clears throat> you this night may be the opportunity to make sure that everything has been taken care of between you and God. Listen to what it says. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, 
that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. We're going to be standing. We're going to be doing something. We may be driving down the highway. We may be walking down the sidewalk. We may be out in the field working. We may be doing something. You may be running a, a piece of equipment out in the field or somewhere. You may be doing something of some kind. But when this event takes place, you're right in the middle of it. Amen. You're not going to get any way out of it. You're going to be right in the middle of this event that is fixing to take place. Listen to me, my friend, tonight. If you do not know the Lord, if there's anybody in this building tonight that does not know the Lord, tonight is the night to make sure that everything is fixing to take place. You know, I begin to see the things that is happening around us. Every time that I turn my television off, I see an event of something that is taking place. And whenever I see it, a lot of people just say, well, it's something that happened today, and it's not. It's all over with. Uh, that's it. Now, friend, every time uh, that I see God uh, move, I see something happen, uh, I see God right in the middle of it. Yep. Whenever I see the, the Twin Towers, when they were brought down that day, you know what I seen? Uh, I seen the fulfilling uh, of God's Word. Uh, I seen everything put right into place the way that it's fixed, the way it was supposed to be. I seen it when it happened. You've seen it when it happened, and you know for sure that it did happen. Without a doubt, you know what happened. Now, I'm trying to get this through your mind tonight. Jesus is coming back. Amen. He has went away. He said, I go away to prepare a place for you, that where I am, there you may be also. God has went, and He's took everything, and He's put it right in place. This thing is not going to continue to go on and on and on because God will not allow it to happen. It is time right now that the Lord is saying, I'm fixing to close it out. Amen. I'm fixing to make everything to word that it's over with. Amen. I'm fixing to move us out of the thing called time. And I'm going to move us into a place where the time is no more. I'd like to stand up here tonight and tell you everything I could about heaven. It won't take me long to tell you what I know. I don't know very much. I don't know very much about heaven. I can't tell you, can tell you about how the doors are made, how the windows are put in, how everything is placed in place, how the throne of God is. I cannot stand here tonight and explain that to you by no way, no means, no how that I know how to do it. I cannot stand here tonight and tell you how hot hell is. I can pretty well tell you it's going to be very uncomfortable. Amen. I can tell you this, there will be no water in hell. I can tell you this, there will be no peace in hell. Right. There will be nobody to come and to take you by the hand and say, it's good to see you. Nobody is going to come and say anything good to you. That's right. If anything, they're going to come and say, you should have warned me of this place. Why didn't you tell me that this was fixing to take place? That I was going to end up here. Let's get into reality again. Let's get into reality. Let me tell you something, my friend. There's a great event that's fixing to take place. This great event is just at the, at the point of happening. This great event that I'm talking about is right at the point of happening. He said, well, what are you talking about? Let me tell you what to say. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. They're coming out of the grave. There's going to be something that's going to bring them out of the grave. Now I want you to take just for a moment I want you, have, how many people have seen there was a, a great ship that went down, the Titanic? How many, how many people know it? How many people seen the movie of Titanic? There was a lot of people that went down with that boat to the bottom of the ocean. There has been a lot of battleships that have been sunk all over the creation of the earth. There has been all kinds of events that have taken place. There is people that has died in the, in the jungle. 
There has been people that have uh, died uh, up on top of mountains. There has been people that died in the lowest valleys of the world. But at them that was ready to meet the Lord, they're sitting there or standing there or laying there tonight. They're not standing. They are laying there. Their bones may be decayed and everything, but they are waiting for this event that I'm telling you about. Even though they may be five miles under the ocean, out in the ocean, they're right waiting for this event that is fixing to take place. I want you to hear what this next verse says. For the Lord himself shall descend. You see, I don't believe it. I don't believe he's coming back. For the Lord Himself shall descend. I'm talking about a great event that is fixing to happen and nothing can stop it. That's right. Nothing can stop it. Nothing will stop it. I don't care who you are or what you do. It is fixing to take place regardless. That's right. For the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. There's going to be a great noise. Now we can holler and scream and we can make all the noise you want to. Have you ever been in a coliseum somewhere whenever there's a big ball game going on and everybody's screaming and hollering and all of a sudden you all you hear is just a, a roar. Amen. That's nothing to compare with the voice of the Lord. And He says, that's enough. That's right. Amen. That's it. I'm not going to do no more. Gabriel, pick up the trumpet. Listen to what it says. And with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of the Lord, and the dead in Christ shall rise. Them that was on the bottom of the ocean, them that was on the mountaintop, them was in the jungles, them that was serving were all over the world, that was ready to meet the Lord. This great event is fixing to take place like nothing you've ever seen of or heard before, it is fixing to take place instantly in the moment in the twinkling of an eye. You're not going to have a chance to do anything about it because it's all over. That's right. Amen. Instantly. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Amen. Now let me tell you something, beloved. You can fool me. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm coming on, on the backside. You can fool me. You can say, yeah, I'm ready to meet the Lord. I've got everything taken care of. Don't worry about me, brother Oscar. Everything's taken care of. But you can't fool God. You can't fool God. Whenever He says it's time for you to go, my friend, it's between you and Him. It's over. Amen. That's right. That's it. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the air, in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with Him. Now, when this event takes place, it's over. That's it. There ain't going to be no more changes. You say, well, my, my priest will pray me out of purgatory. Your poor priest will be in hell with the rest of them. Amen. Amen. That's right. If you believe that. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Be some clothes. Mike, would you come to the piano, please? <clears throat> this great event that I'm telling you about. is about to take place.
Listen, I'm, I'm not going to ask you to run to this altar. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to give an altar call to say, run to this altar and give your heart to the Lord. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. But I will give you a warning tonight. This warning is about the big, great event that is fixing to take place. I know people say, I've heard this all my life. That means it's closer now, Clayton, than it was 50 years ago. That means that it could happen any minute. You know, I, I, I seen a, a movie. It hadn't been long ago, but it wasn't, yeah, I guess it was kind of a movie. And it showed people in the church. And they were all in the church singing and worshiping the Lord. Some of them was, some of them wasn't. And all of a sudden, the trumpet of the Lord sang. And them that was taken out, they went on to be with the Lord. But them that was left, all of a sudden it rested in their mind what had taken place. Something has taken place. Now I don't have another chance. And people begin to fall on their face. They begin to say, God help me. God help me too late. Too late. It ain't going to happen. It's all over now. Don't wake up and say it's too late. It's all over. Nothing will happen me now. I want everybody in the building to stand. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to take and you raise your hands to the Lord. One hand, just one hand. Say, God, don't let nobody that has heard this message tonight leave this building without knowing Him. Don't let nobody leave this building tonight without knowing God. This is serious. This is serious. This is the most serious thing that you'll ever face in your entire life. You'll never face nothing else like this. Take your last wake, waking eye. Say, God, make everything right between me and you. Because I know you're coming back. Amen. He made it to where all we got to do is just go to him and talk to him. Pray for the church. Keep the church in your prayers. The devil is moving. Satan is trying to tear down. 
but we're not going to lose. Hallelujah. We're going forward. We're not looking back. In the name of Jesus. Remember Sunday morning? Remember Sunday morning? We have Sunday school.